with no chromosomal analysis done. During and in between pregnancies, no investigation was carried out to find any uterine structural or developmental anomalies. No history of tablet flocculate or subcutaneous injection administrations in any of the gestations. No history of acute infection or trauma in any of the pregnancy. History of diabetes mellitus in the family and her oral glucose tolerance test was done in October 2020 and was normal as told her. No history of thyroid disease in the family and no workup yet. <coughs> no history of addiction, alcohol, or cigarette smoking. No special investigations in between pregnancies for these losses were carried out. She had pelvic ultrasound, which was normal. No history of hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, thyroid related disease as the above. History of two cesarean sections in the past. She has maintained her hygiene well, no history of drugs, smoking, no history of allergy to any drug or non common allergens. Her husband is running a shop of his own, living their own houses, meeting their expenses somehow well. Her father is diabetic and as a family. Her age of minority is 14 years. Her menstrual cycle is regular or four, or four to five every 30 days, but moderate flow. No any associated dysmenorrhea, dysperonia, intermenstrual, or postmortal pain. No history of discharge per vagina. Pap severe never taken. Her last menstrual period is 25th of May, 21. No history of shortness of breath, any chest discomfort. Her first and second heart sounds are audible with no added sounds. Normal vesicular breathing. No history of cough, shortness of breath. No history of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. No history of headache, dizziness, tremors. A young lady sitting comfort comfortably on her chair, well oriented in time, place, and person. And the vitals taken at the, that time are as pulse 82 beats per minute, blood pressure of 120 by 70 millimeters of mercury, e febrile. Her weight was 70 kilograms and a height of 5 feet 3 inches with a BMI of 27.3 kilograms per meter square. Her teeth were natural and fixed with good urodental hygiene. She is not pale, no signs of jaundice. Her thyroid is not enlarged, she will be not raised, no any signs of clubbing. Her accessible, palpable lymph nodes are not enlarged. No nodules, swelling, or ulceration, and no any visible discharge for breast, no any tenderness or nodules or palpation. Abdomen is flat above the umbilicus, but mildly protuberant below umbilicus. Previous cesarean scar noted, no dilated veins, stretch marks present. Abdomen soft, non tender, no any mass or visible enlargement. After verbal consent in presence of the female chatbot, the pelvic examination done, external genitalia normal looking, no skin discoloration, lumps, or previous scars. Spaculum revealed healthy vagina, adequate, no discharge, cervix pinpoint healthy. No signs of inflammation. Cervix palpated gently. No any hardness, tenderness, or reduce. Uterus normal size, antiverted mobile. No tenderness. Uterus normal size, antiverted mobile. No tenderness, bilateral, and an extra clear. 32 years of age, para 2 plus 5, previous to cesareans with 5 first trimester miscarriages. Oral glucose tolerance tests and pelvic uh, ultrasound that is a baseline worker, which were normal. Her husband is 35 years of age with no comorbids. She presented for evaluation of recurrent miscarriages. How are you going to proceed to manage this patient? Uh, sir, uh, before proceeding to the management, I would uh, just like uh, to do the counseling of the couple so that uh, they should have at least a baseline idea about the investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, counseling uh, of uh, this kind of a case, like repeated pregnancy loss, is a very sensitive issue uh, and we need a very uh, skillful uh, knowledge and skills both to counsel the patient. First of all, uh, I would like uh, to ask, first of all, I would like to ask my patient because she's facing this uh, loss from the uh, last like six to seven years. 
and she is visiting uh, the local doctor for visiting frequently. So I would ask, uh, I would like to ask her first that what information she already have about it. Sir, father, what concept about she had? Like, okay, what are the causes for the repeated pregnancy loss? What she knew. After uh, knowing all this, uh, I will start by asking. Based on clin uh, clinical uh, evidence or the guideline, uh, guidelines, uh, I will start my counseling as uh, about only one person of the couple, mm -hmm. of, about only one person of every ten patients come to us. Not for the reason because they cannot get preg pregnant, but because of the reason because uh, they can't stay pregnant for a de definitive timeline to have a baby or a healthy baby. It could be once, or it could be more than once, or thrice, and it is that uh, tremendously stressful. There, are, uh, there could be a lot of causes for this. Some causes are known, and some causes are not known. Uh, to make it uh, a more easier and understandable uh, for her, uh, for you as a patient, I would like uh, to organize this into like four categories. To discuss with you, uh, number one, the genetic aspect, the genetic aspect, number two, the anatomy of the uterus, the hormones, yeah, number one, pick out the genetic, 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 genetics, genetic aspect, genetic, method. anatomy of the uterus, uh, hormones, and the uh, immune system. And now, uh, as far as the uh, uh, genetic aspect is concerned, uh, parents, both of the parents, either of the parents, we need okay, to assess for yeah, uh, uh, this, Is this part of the counseling that you are doing? Yes, okay, yes, the... so, what is the education of this patient? Uh, sir, she is primary, but like, definitely we do this uh, counseling uh, in work. Right. So, so how are you going to tell her about genetics? Uh, sir, I will tell her that our human body is a lot of cells. जिनका अंदर जो कंपोनेंट है बेसिक उसको हम बोलते हैं जीन्स हम सब के अंदर इंडिविजुअली uh, 46 क्रोमोसोम्स होते हैं जो कि होने चाहिए पर उस क्रोमोसोम के अंदर फर्दर एक जेनेटिक मटेरियल होता है जिसकी एक एनवायरनमेंट होती है जिसको एप्रोप्रिएट होना होता है फिर दोनों पार्टनर्स ने हाफ ऑफ द क्रोमोसोम्स शेयर करने होते हैं जिसको हम बोलते हैं क्रोमोसोमल ट्रांसमिशन इसमें हमने क्रोमोसोम बोला इसमें हमने जीन्स बोला इसमें हमने शेयर करने का बोला पार्टनर्स का ये वो समझ समझ पाएगी सर क्योंकि थोड़ा सा उसको बेस का आइडिया देना फिर बहुत जरूरी हो जाएगा ना कैसे जो कुछ तो समझ आए कॉस आपके ख्याल में क्या जेनेटिक कॉसेस क्या हो सकते हैं सर करंटली क्रोमोसोमल रीअरेंजमेंट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ क्रोमोसोमल रीअरेंजमेंट सर बैलेंस you think that in her case that would be a possibility? Uh, sir, because it is the first trimester. Hmm? So, first trimester miscarriages are. She has had two full term pregnancies. Full term pregnancies, sir. First five miscarriages are first trimester. Five miscarriages, sir. So, what is the balance translocation? Sir, parents के अंदर वही बस कुछ plan करना चाह रही थी कि parents के अंदर balance और translocation होती है तो वो physically they look healthy कोई इस तरह से abnormality नहीं होती but when they share the conceptions which is called how are we going to determine that sir वो a blood test which is called karyotyping karyotyping does it tell you about balance translocation जी sir karyotyping doesn't tell you about that karyotyping only tells you about the number of chromosomes that the person has सर उसके अगर हम कम नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोसोम्स और उसके अंदर जेनेटिक मटेरियल को करने के बाद फिर हम सर्टेन जेनेटिक एनालिसिस करते हैं उसके अंदर भी होता है सर्टेन जेनेटिक एनालिसिस होता है पाकिस्तान में सर लेकिन हम भी इसे पॉसिबल ऑप्शंस को बता रहे हैं वो बताने का क्या मतलब जहां पे आप उसको ले अगर आपको पता है किसी का देखा आपने आज तक बैलेंस ट्रांसमिशन की रिपोर्ट एनीवन अमंगस द ऑडियंस हु हैज सीन बैलेंस ट्रांसमिशन Genetic report of a patient. Okay. 
So uh, that, that's an investigation which is actually not available here. The maximum that uh, you would do chromosomal analysis is that you send it to Aga Khan or some other facilities and they will tell you karyotype. Yes, they will tell you about uh, the number of chromosomes and that's it. That it is uh, 46XY, 46XX or whatever. So we have almost this. So telling someone about an investigation which is not even available which may be incomprehensible for that woman or that patient or that person uh, and using those terms, do you think that will solve any problem? So, so next up, uh, you are going to counsel her about her anatomy. And, uh, what are you going to tell her about anatomy? So in anatomy of the uterus, we tell her about that there could be extra drugs like polyps, fibroid, smooth muscle tumors, fibroid polyps. Do you think uh, they are responsible, any anatomical defect like that is responsible for first time miscarriage repeatedly? Uh, sir, basically anatomy is more uh, like uh, important for the second trimester miscarriages but uh, septate uterus and the submucous fibroids. Uh, which are protruding the cavity. So, septate uterus ka bui, 2013 mein uska jo normal delivery hui hai, 2014. 12 mein last delivery hui hai. Adhisa 2012. 2012 mein. 2013 mein ho pregnant ho gai. Aur phir uh, septate uterus kaan se aagi. Sir, usko hum possible causes bata rahe. Uh, wo zaruri nahi ke patient ka usko get fit ho. Thum bata kerege thum ga idea ho ga. Lekin at least patient. Yeah, man, 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 कि वो ऐसी कॉजेस उनको पढ़ाने का क्या मकसद है अब हमें तो पढ़ाए तो ठीक है कि आप बताएं कि ये कुछ हो सकता है लेकिन उसको पेशेंट को आप अगर बताएंगे कि सेप्टेट यूट्रस जो कि उसमें रेलेवेंट नहीं अगर मुझे भी आप कहोगे तो मैं उसको समझूंगा कि आप सिर्फ किताब में पूरी लिस्ट पढ़ के आ गए हो जो आप मुझे बता रहे हो बट इज इज दैट रेलेवेंट टू दिस पेशेंट not much ka matlab hai to some extent yes how do you say to some extent yes and if there is you think that there can be a septum how do you diagnose that uh sir uh septum transfer jada like disorder just hmm acha chalo septum fibroid ole I don't know whether the polyps cause recurrent miscarriage really. Chalo ji, chotha point aap usko hormone ke baare mein batana chahte hain. Ji sir, hormone ke baare mein dekh mat aur the thyroid hormone which is responsible for basic metabolism in the body and one uh, could be uh, having either over or underactive thyroid. Uh, one can have either uh, overactive or underactive thyroid for which simple blood tests are available to see the complete profile of the thyroid hormone and uh, so this is the test that you can tell about thyroid or hormones so thyroid hormone is the same for the diabetes you said that the oral glucose is the same for the oral immunology Sir, PCOS, rather PCOS, who will be responsible for the current miscarriages? Any features that the patient has PCOS? Sir, history of weight gain in the patient care there, no? And in addition to that? In addition to that, sir, there is no other thing, or abnormal hair distribution, or infrequent cycles, so that my history of weight gain, there are no other features suggested. No, sir, I will come back to you again. This is for education of everyone. You see, this is not the counseling that one would want to get into with the, the patient because if you start explaining the theory and uh, the whole chapter of recurrent miscarriage to a patient that is really not on that is the purpose of counseling is actually it is more of explanation of the situation and description a little bit of description of how you are taking the patient from that point onwards to the desired outcome 
उसकी आपने समरी देनी है इन एज फ्यू वर्ड्स एज इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज द मोर यू टॉक द मोर द पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू गेट कंफ्यूज एंड हैव मोर थिंग्स इन देयर माइंड मैं इफ इन द क्लिनिक द पेशेंट्स आस्क मी टू मेनी क्वेश्चंस एंड देन दे स्टार्ट आस्किंग डिटेल्स आई टेल देम दैट डोंट मेक योर डॉक्टर टॉक टू मच because then you would start if they for example if they start asking you what are the complications of a procedure then you or kya ho sakti or kya ho sakti ultimately it will end at death of the patient that can happen with any uh, procedure if you give an injection she has an anaphylactic reaction that ho sakti but do you want to discuss it that's with the patient you don't and you don't want the patient to lead up to that point where it is the whole situation even in a cancer patient terminally ill patient terminally ill cancer patient do you tell the patient directly if i i personally would disagree with that that you are going to die in two weeks time you would say that well we have come to the end of the available management and whatever is possible we are still doing it because that that management is making the patient comfortable giving the patient analgesics and all other supportive therapy which is required for making the patient comfortable so in a terminal ill patient you uh, approach the subject in an uh, in a manner which is uh, palatable to the patient palatable to the attendants as well without uh, getting into uh, you are not going to be untrue you are not going to tell any lies you are going to tell the patient the situation but that situation that explanation which the patient will understand so counseling is explanation of the situation and the possibilities of what management or management possibilities are available and how would they be conducted so in this patient the understanding that well we know that this is but to start with, i would start with reassuring that look here that it is good that you have two children and you had two pregnancies which were carried to term which is a positive sign and you have had these miscarriages we will carry out some investigations some tests and then we will come to and then we will devise a treatment for you which will help you uh, as much as possible to carry this pregnancy to term now this is this these are three four things that you would want to tell them right not the whole theory of uh, genetics and anatomy and the hormonal all those causes are not for the patient they are for you and even the examination you don't start narrating all that chaliye counseling ho gayi ab uske baad kya karna answer investigation the investigation do you want the patient to be admitted in the hospital or are you going to uh, dispose her off from the opd that's right our patient opd so you will manage her on opd basis right as investigations uh, the baseline investigations a uh, complete blood count uh, for hemoglobin glc and blood tests complete blood count kar diya to usme sab kuch shamil ho gaya you don't have to nnc it the theek cbc kar di aur hemolysis uh, surface antigen and anti hcv aap isko cd viral markers bol dete hain usme sara kuch ho jata hai so usko bolo viral markers viral markers screening anti hcv screening You will not repeat her. You will get her to some done. You can disregard that. I am not saying that whatever investigations the patient has previously, you disregard them without 
any consideration. I am not saying that. But look at the quality of those investigations, where they have been done, and what was the qualification. Many of, even um, I, I am a specialist, so to say, in obstetrics and gynecology. I also carry out ultrasound, and uh, but I don't give a report. I don't rely on that for IUGR, etc., etc., and for almost every patient. Perhaps I am getting more ultrasounds done than necessary uh, from the specialist. Now, most of the family physicians in periphery they carry out ultrasound themselves, and they have report uterus, AV, normal size, uh, no cyst, etc. And that is the report that you have. Now, you are not going to bank on that if you are really serious about uh, assessment of the patient from ultrasonography point of view or imaging, then have that ultrasound repeated by a reliable ultrasonologist on uh, obviously working on good equipment. So, therefore, uh, an ultrasound which has been carried out in periphery by a family physician that uh, I, I personally would not put my faith into that and I will have that ultrasound repeated as I said by a specialist. Chalo ji, thyroid profile karwa liya aapne aur ultrasound karwa liya. Ultrasound mein kya dekhna chaate hain? Sir, before you have been taking this, are you a friend of ontology or taking entry services of normal architecture or both of the ovaries? Kya kya? Oh, ek architecture of uterus ka aapne dekh liya. आर्किटेक्चर नहीं उसको बोलते हैं आप उसको एनाटॉमी ही बोलोगे हाँ यू ट्राइन एनाटॉमी आपने देख ली और वैसे यू ट्राइन एनाटॉमी हम देखेंगे उसकी और हम उधर वो दोनों ओवरी एंड मॉर्फोलॉजी देखेंगे क्या ओवरी एंड मॉर्फोलॉजी में क्या देखोगे आप सर ओवरी के साइज शेप और वो जो है ना व्हाट इस दी � stingy with you and wants to be mean ہم پوچھے گا انیٹمی آپ نے آپ کے موہ سے لفظ ایک نکل گیا آپ وہ پوچھے گا اچھا چلو بتاؤ وہ اس کا کیا اگر آپ سارے نوٹ کر لو درہ یہ سوال کہ آپ can you yes آمن شیپ آپ نے کہہ دیا not necessarily rounded سی ہوتی ہے over shape کی ہوتی آپ do you feel confident in describing a normal over because when you describe that, you describe its shape, its size, its color, its surface appearance. And depending upon the uh, uh, time period or age of the patient, you will uh, 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 give that appearance in a child, in a, a reproductive age uh, woman, and in a menopausal woman. And the size and the appearance that will change. And uh, someone has rightly uh, pointed out the many a times the menstrual cycle period also because there may be if you perform uh, or if you see an ovary and at the time of laparotomy or laparoscopy in the uh, follicular phase then you might see a developing follicle uh, or projecting at the surface not necessarily all the time but sometimes that would be uh, uh, that can be visible on the other hand if uh, for some reason, the laparoscopy is being done in the uh, second half of the cycle, then you might see a recently ruptured collapsed follicle. And that would be apparent also on ultrasound, and you would get a certain appearance on ultrasound, a collapsed follicle with a streak of flu fluid around it or some blood within that. Or you can see even a small hemorrhage exists, depending upon the time period of uh, the cycle that you are doing. But what I'm saying is that, let's say, uh, uh, when you say something like this, that the ovarian morphology, etc., then you should be prepared to answer some uh, such basic questions, right? Now, what is the purpose of your ultrasound for this uh, patients, uh, for uh, seeing the ovaries? What kind of morphology do you expect or you want to rule out? PCOS. Polycystic ovaries. PCOS आप नहीं उसमें करेंगे क्योंकि वो सिंड्रोम है आप ओवरी के लिए जब पूछा जा रहा है तो आप ओवरी की मॉर्फोलॉजी बताओगे जो कि पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवरी है और पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवरी की अपीरेंस व्हाट इस दी करेक्ट व्हाट आर दी करैक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवरी की अपीरेंस ऑन जो सम 
इसमें बल्कि ओवरिंग्स होते हैं उसका व्हाट डू यू मीन बल्कि ओवरिंग्स मतलब अल्ट्रासाउंड पे आप बल्कि नहीं कहते हो अल्ट्रासाउंड पे यू मई एज देम एंड यू गिव दैट साइज सर सर और जो नंबर ऑफ फैट्स फॉलिकल्स ज्यादा आपको करेक्ट नहीं आएगा कितना फॉलिकल्स का नंबर होगा सर 12 टू 9 हां वो मतलब है वो ज्यादा होगा 12 टू 14 आम तौर पे अगर तुम अगर यहां पे तो सम तुम देखते हो तो आयशा उमर जो है वो तो सम करती 12 टू 14 एंट्रल फॉलिकल्स यूजुअली मोर देन 10 कहा जाता है मोर देन 10 एंड एंट्रल फॉलिकल्स और फिर उनका साइज भी क्वालीफाई करने के लिए क्या साइज और अगर है तो देन वो अगर एक 16 मिलीमीटर है एंड देयर आर 12 टू 14 वो फिर भी पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवरीज है बिकॉज़ पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवरीज आर नॉट ऑलवेज आर एन ओवुलेटरी दे कैन ओवुलेट एंड यू कैन कम अक्रॉस पेशेंट्स एंड पर्टिकुलरली इन दोस इन हुम ओवुलेशन इंडक्शन हैज बीन कैरीड आउट दैट यू फाइंड अ फॉलिकल व्हिच इज से अ साइज ऑफ 18 इनटू 20 मिलीमीटर डिपेंडिंग ऑन द टाइम दैट यू हैव दैट ऑल्सो सम डन बट एट द सेम टाइम इट शोस द फीचर्स ऑफ पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवरीज राइट सो What I am trying to emphasize here is, जी बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा, ये ट्वेल्व फॉलिकल्स हैं। जो आप बात कर कर रहे हो, फिर उसके बारे में आपको पता होना चाहिए कि आप ये इन्वेस्टिगेशन कराने जा रहे हो, उसके बारे में पता होना चाहिए। अच्छा जी आपने थायराइड करवा लिया, वो नॉर्मल है, ग्लूकोस्ट्रोलिन स्ट्रेस उनका हुआ हुआ पहले से है, वो नॉर्मल है। और because the frequency with which she has been getting pregnant is uh, quite remarkable wo kafi wo theek hai to phir ab kya karna kya hai humne inka uske alawa kya hota hai jo repeated miscarriages itni hoti hai usme kya kya possibilities ho sakti hai aur sir anti phospholipid antibody syndrome anti phospholipid antibody syndrome how many of uh, people on the meet on the net or virtually how many of you Or would have done these tests for antiphospholipid antibody syndromes, lupus anticoagulant, and or do you see one? Anti-cardiac antibody. Anti-cardiac antibody. How many of you uh, get these done? The fifteen percent. Huh? Fifteen percent risk. Acha. Antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Okay. So fifteen percent risk. So if they are positive, what will they do then? उसके बाद हम उसको लो मोलिकुलर वे जी लेकिन सर फिर भी इस तरह की जो प्रेगनेंसीज होती है जिसमें एंटी फॉस्फोलिपिड एंटीबॉडी सिंड्रोम हो तो उसमें बड़े रिस्क होता है फॉर आईयूजी और प्री एक्लैम्पसिया और स्टिल फॉर रिकरेंट मिसकैरेज और प्रीटर्म डिलीवरी तो उसमें बड़ी क्लोज एंटीबॉडी सर्वर दैट समय चाहिए होती है कितनी क्लोज सर इसकी तो पहले से बहुत क्लोज हुई नहीं हुई थी तो नॉर्मल एंटीबॉडीज भी नहीं हुआ था पेशेंट के सर क्लोज इन सेंस के फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग के जैसे 6 टू 8 वीक फिर उन्होंने एपिसोड कराया तो उसके बाद जो है वो ऐसे ही नहीं था उसी के लिए देखेंगे कि वो किस टाइम आती है चलो आप करवा रहे हो एवरी क्लोज का मतलब ये होता है देखो अगर तुमने क्लोज कहना है तो उसका ये मतलब है कि जो जनरली एक्सेप्टेड इंटरवल है ऑफ एंटीनेटल एग्जामिनेशंस और एंटीनेटल विजिट्स आप उसको डबल कर लेते हो डबल के बजाय ज्यादा और भी कर लेते हो let's say okay, in first half of pregnancy or in the first two trimesters if you are conducting the antenatal examination or checkups every four weeks then you call the patient every two weeks usse bhi zyada masla hai to every week call kar lo usse bhi zyada masla hai to patient ko admit kar lo ye is tarike se aapki approach hogi patient ko manage karne ke liye lekin aap agar 20 hafte pe aapko nazar aa gaya fir kya karoge aap 
आई यू जी आर नजर आ गई दिस इज अगेन अन क्वेश्चन दिस इज नॉट रियली ऑन अच्छा एग्जामिनर जो होता है वो आपको इस तरीके से नहीं लेके जाता कि आप डेड एंड पे आ जाओ ट्वेंटी वीक्स पे आई यू जी आर हो गया है ऑलिगोहाइड्रमियोज हो गया दैट प्रेगनेंसी इज वर्चुअली टू एंड इफ यू सेट वेल वी कॉन्ट रियली डू एनी थिंग तो हैपरेन इन सिक्स वीक्स पोस्ट मार्टम एंड उसी तरफ बाद में आते हैं सो देर फोर ये डोंट गेट इन टू दैट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन वेयर दी एग्जामिनर स्टार्ट आस्किंग क्वेश्चन लाइक दैट वो उस सिचुएशन में ना जाए कि आप इस तरह से करेंगे क्योंकि नाउ दिस इज दिस इज एन इंफॉर्मेशन विच यू हैव वॉलंटियर दैट दीज पेशेंट्स आर लाइकली टू हैव दिस दिस प्रॉब्लम लेट दैट क्वेश्चन कम फ्रॉम द एग्जामिनर यू डोंट वॉलंटियर दैट बिकॉज़ देन यू आर ट्राइंग टू स्टीयर द एग्जामिनर इन अ डायरेक्शन व्हिच इज अल्टीमेटली गोइंग टू बी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू राइट so if you said anti phospholipid anti body syndrome and you said that you will give loprin and you will give a low molecular weight heparin i was quite happy with that and i said all right you give that and uh, we will then monitor the pregnancy and let it go on but if you start the bulging that you know about anti phospholipid anti body syndrome that it can do this 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 then i will start asking you about that so the lesson in this point is That don't volunteer unnecessary information uh, because that can land you in trouble. You may not know everything. Not necessarily a patient that you get of recurrent miscarriage will uh, have discussion about recurrent miscarriage. It can have discussion about, let's say, a urethral. It can have discussion about the impact on life of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. its diagnosis pitfalls how many times do you get uh, these tests done for anti phospholipid antibodies and at what intervals uh, sir they should be done in a non pregnant uh, stage uh, at least uh, two positive tests should be there at uh, 12 weeks apart ha yes it to tell 12 weeks apart aur wo aap ko ho theek hai na ab ye aapko pata hai ye aap kitna padha hai lekin aage aapne information de ke apne aap ko you got into uh, un- un- unnecessary and uncharted area चलिए जी ये सारे टेस्ट हमने किए ये सारे ठीक आ गए इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आया अब क्या करें फिफ्टीड What are the issues and the problems? है तो सही ऐसा ना कहो कि नहीं है वो 50 percent जो chromosomal abnormalities होती हैं which are natural which happen which actually are there because uh, of uh, there is so much of attrition as a matter of fact 50 percent of pregnancies जो कि actually होती हैं जिसमें के embryo बनता है और embryo gets to some extent implanted 50% of all the total pregnancies according to one estimate are washed out along with menstruation at the time of that without the patient getting overdue so that is the kind of uh, 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 frequency of attrition of fertilized eggs those who have had some experience in ivf would know that when a number of uh, folly or number of eggs are harvested in the uh, uh, assisted reproductive cycle say eight eggs are obtained not all of them would fertilize and that is natural not all which fertilize will start to divide some would uh, uh, show only its polar body and uh, not divide into two cells and wither away some would wither away at two cell stage others at four cell stage that's why uh, when, when uh, initially in ivf uh, uh, people used to uh, transfer uh, uh, embryos at four cell stage uh, and uh, they didn't know what the fate would be of those nowadays the embryo is allowed to develop in the incubator till marula and blastocyst stage and blastocyst uh, transfers is carried out and generally 
the impression is that the blastocyst transfer results in greater pregnancy rate because you have seen that one particular embryo developing up to that stage and those which did not develop which withered away at an earlier stage they wouldn't really have resulted in pregnancy because they were wasted earlier on so therefore there is a natural attrition rate which is quite high and that is responsible for these miscarriages the average rate of miscarriage in the population generally overall is 15 to 20 percent and more than 70 percent of these are because of chromosomal abnormalities which happen normally and that is when you if you tell the couple that these are because of chromosomal abnormalities in the counseling you will also tell them that this is not an aspersion or a reflection of the woman or her husband's abnormality it has got nothing to do with that each one of them or both of them are absolutely normal and all normal apparently normal human beings have this possibility of producing embryos which are abnormal so that is the kind of abnormality rate and that if you tell the couple this that's quite reassuring that they know that this happens normally in a normal uh, manner of fashion and that's why even after three or four abortions there still would be more than 50 percent chance of the woman getting that pregnancy to term without any treatment without even uh, that low dose aspirin that you said all right anyway we have to give this patient something all her tests are negative and uh, no abnormality has been found so what would you do all right first of all i'll say that well when you did ultrasound you found that uh, the ovaries had a polycystic appearance weight kitna patient bmi kitna tha sir wo obese hai lekin wo average 27.3 27.3 तो ओवरवेट है ओबीस तो नहीं है ओवरवेट है तो इतनी तो ओबीस नहीं है बार 25 ना फिर कितनी लड़कियां बैठी हैं जो 25 से ज्यादा हों ठीक आ मतलब मैं नहीं अब इसे मुड़के नहीं मत इसे मुड़के नहीं मत देख रहा पर तुम सारे समझदार हो तो 27 को आप शुक्र है और 27 है तो वो तो कहेगी कि जी इतनी मोटी मोटी हैं सारे इतने बच्चे पैदा किए जा रही हैं आपने मुझे मुझ पे इतराज कर दिया और क्या करोगे हाउ डू यू डायग्नोज पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवरीज और पॉलीसिस्टिक ओवेरियन सिंड्रोम लेट्स से नाउ पीसीओएस हाउ डू यू डायग्नोज सर रोटरडम क्राइटेरिया हैं रोटरडम क्राइटेरिया रोटरडम रोटरडम नहीं है रोटरडम है रोटरडम हां नेदरलैंड का शहर है रोटरडैम उसके वहां पे मेरी मीटिंग हुई थी उसका क्या से क्या बना रहे हो तुम तो वहां पे मीटिंग हुई थी तो उसमें ये डिसाइड किया था कि वो टू आउट ऑफ दोस थी ऑलराइट वो ठीक है तो एक तो चलो आपने वेट मैं तो ऊंची बोल बोल के लड़की और तुम सब के लिए गला खराब हो गया मेरा और ये मेरी आवाज ऊंची होती जा रही है इसकी आवाज नीचे होती जा रही है अच्छा अगर पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवरीज है फिर क्या करोगे वेट रिडक्शन होगी ना ये बात तो कर दी उसके अलावा भी कुछ कर दो ना इसने यहाँ तक पढ़ के आगे उसके बाद आगे नहीं पढ़ा गया इसमें मैंने देखा था कि मेडिकल बैंक के अंदर पेपर बेंसी कोई रोल नहीं है तो पेशेंट अगर कंसीव कर लेती है तो फिर उसमें जो है हम ऐसे लेंसेस डाइजिंग एजेंट दे सकते हैं पेशेंट के लिए मैंने पढ़ा दिया है अगर कंसीव कर ले तो तुमने मेटफॉर्मिन स्टार्ट कर देगा अच्छा चलो अगर कंसीव कर ले तो उससे पहले भी दे दो तो आपने एस्प्रिन ये देर आर ऑलवेज चेंजिंग व्यूज अबाउट दिस इन 2018 प्रोबेबली एशिया कॉन्फ्रेंस लास्ट हुई थी 2018 उसमें गाइडलाइंस नहीं आई थी जिसमें उन्होंने कहा कि जी ये मेटफॉर्मिन का इतना रोल नहीं है और मेटफॉर्मिन के साथ आप वो वो एरोमेटेज इनहिबिटर्स के बजाय वापस आ गए थे वो पहले एरोमेटेज इनहिबिटर्स करना देना शुरू कर दिए थे तो फिर कहा कि चलो 
आप प्रोग्राफी से ट्रेड पे वापस आ जाओ सो वो होता रहता है तो इनका बट जनरली एक्सेप्टेड इज दैट यू गिव दैट फॉर्म एन एंड वे इंट्रोडक्शन लाइफस्टाइल चेंजेस तो लाइफस्टाइल चेंज उसको जिस तरह से भी होगा और उसके मुताबिक जिस माहौल से पेशेंट आई है उस माहौल के मुताबिक आप लाइफस्टाइल चेंज बताओगे हम गांव से एक लड़की आई भी उसको कहोगे तुम पार्क में जाके तीन चक्कर भी लाओ या ट्रेडमिल और जिम ज्वाइन कर लो और तो वो और या कीटो डाइट पे चले जाओ तो वो वो चीजें उनके लिए पॉसिबल नहीं होती मेड फॉर्मल इन प्रेगनेंसी और दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली देयर इजंट एनी स्ट्रेट आंसर फॉर दैट बट इफ यू आर गिविंग इट टू stabilize pregnancy let's say in the, as one would do in polycystic ovaries uh, then i would give it till 12 weeks and no more because it wouldn't really have any effect on that i am a little now afraid of metformin although we prescribe it a lot both for uh, uh, abnormal uh, gtt which is now carried out for in every girl uh, at 24 weeks in every pregnancy more or less or in pco which is again very common but uh, my observation is that uh, we are having small for dates babies uh, nowadays there is a tendency for these and to a great extent i personally blame uh, uh, metformin for that and pre pregnancy well uh, as soon as um, i would start giving it because in this history this is i am not very <clears throat> happy with the is in the sense that on one side the patient is uh practicing contraception on the other immediate yeah, and then she uses medicines to get pregnant and every year she has been getting pregnant now what kind of contraception what kind of uh, uh, assisted the pregnancy is this so there and i am actually very doubtful about quite a few of these pregnancies i i'm not sure whether all these pregnancies were there Uh, but if the patient says so, and if there is also some evidence, you we will go along with this history. But I would want to see her in an actual state of pregnancy and confirm that, and then go on along with that. Now, metformin uh, is given uh, to uh, promote that kind of environment within the body, which is uh, uh, to uh, reduce the level of. you see if you look at the hormonal profile of uh, uh polycystic ovaries uh, apart from the fact that fsh and lh ratio is usually disturbed initially in the first two or three days if you get them tested apart from that there is not much emphasis on uh insulin level determination or even an uh, estimation of uh, androgenic levels we gynecologists don't do that uh Uh, uh, endocrinologists uh, do these uh therefore uh i personally would start giving but, but there is definitely a some increase in testosterone because of the effect of uh, uh insulin hyperinsulinemia and in pcos what happens is that there is a peripheral insulin resistance and because of that there is hyperinsulinemia and hyperinsulinemia acts on the granulosa cells where it uh, uh, promotes uh, um, uh, production of androgens so uh, uh, sorry theca cells not granulosa cells theca cells where the uh, development of uh, uh, androgens is uh, promoted and slight imbalance in favor of uh, androgens that can disturb the uh, the the situation so therefore giving metformin pre pregnancy uh around the time of uh, uh conception uh, that that would be important and to carry it on that again in my view uh, uh helps pregnancy maintenance in addition uh, i i now there are many studies that they the support during the luteal phase with progesterone and continuing that progesterogenic support in the early part of pregnancy is helpful and the thirdly of course taking uh, into consideration uh not necessarily overt antiphospholipid antibody syndrome uh it was many years almost two decades ago rcug uh, at that time promoted uh, low dose aspirin that it should be given 
ये यूट्रेन एनेडमी के लिए आता है इसकी सवाल की तरफ भी आते हैं सो देर फॉर दिस पेशेंट मोस्ट लाइकली विल गेट अ कंकॉक्शन ऑफ मेटफॉर्म लो डोज एस्प्रेन एंड इफ ऑल दिस प्रेगनेंसीज हैव देयर प्रीवियसली बीन डॉक्यूमेंटेड देन आई वुड नॉट हेजिटेट इन स्टार्टिंग क्लेक्शन ऑन एन इवन एन एम्पेरिकल बेसिस very few patients who have had clexane as well or low dose uh, or low molecular weight uh, heparin uh, have aborted uh, and then uh, as a matter of uh, patients and your own satisfaction sometimes uh, use of uh, such medication uh, on an empirical basis uh, would be justified ye to main yahan tak to iske liye kahunga ab aa gaye ye septum ki baat hai septum uh, if there have been previously successful pregnancies then uh, uh, i wouldn't really uh, septum would not be one of my differential diagnoses uh, but if on ultrasound you find one or the a good ultrasoundologist you see these days there is a lot of emphasis on imaging ultrasound has developed uh, exponentially and assessment of and those who carry it out uh ultrasound examinations they now uh, are getting into that uh, uh, area where one would uh, not have thought them uh, uh, that to be possible a uh, uh, few years ago for example role of ultrasound in labor i was very skeptical about it i thought that it is just a hoax now uh, uh, what role would ultrasound have in labor recently i had a patient to whom i sent an at in the later weeks of pregnancy for ultrasound and i just happened to visit the ultrasound department and one of my favorite ultrasoundologists she was doing the ultrasound and she told me that the head is fixed and the head is engaged and when i palpated the patient it really was because she was doing it like that now look at the assessment of cervical length cervical length is carried out abdominally with a full bladder it is carried out also transvaginally and it is also carried out transperineally so it is the expertise of the person who is performing that ultrasound examination that uh, you then start relying on that similarly if you start looking at endometriosis now endometriosis is gold standard of diagnosis is laparoscopy diagnostic laparoscopy and uh, biopsy and histopathological examination for confirmation that concept is changing now and greater reliance is being placed on ultrasound assessment of that as a matter of fact there are types of endometriosis which cannot be diagnosed on laparoscopy for example deep seated or deeply infiltrating endometriosis say in recto vaginal septum that is something which will not be visible or if the cutis sac is totally completely obliterated by ultrasound then you wouldn't know its it, that and its extent of uh, involvement of the larger gut now that is something which can be carried out by uh, uh, someone who has got good uh, grasp of ultrasound examinations so therefore those concepts are evolving and changing and uh, uh, therefore the, that greater reliance on uh, assessment of the patients through these means as was uh, commented by someone laparoscopy and hysteroscopy combined they have gained greater uh, uh, role in assessment of say infertility in cases of uh, recurrent miscarriages and these are the things which should be now learned by the newer generation of uh, specialists and uh, i would uh, implore you as a matter of fact not only suggest implore you that you try to get training in endoscopic uh, assessment and endoscopic procedures because that is the future this is what is going to be uh, the kind of uh, surgery that you will be doing or uh, you would be expected to do uterine septum or biconvex uterus is cause of miscarriage well not necessarily for it depends upon the level and uh, a uniconvex uh, uh, uterus is quite capable of carrying pregnancy to term in those cases and uh, sometimes you uh, come across cases who are uh, presenting repeatedly uh, by breach and uh, you come to know that it is uh, a uniconvex uterus so biconvex uterus of that kind 
that wouldn't really cause uh, uh, first trimester. First trimester portions, surely not. To some extent, maybe uh, the septum would cause. But Professor Yusuf is here. He is uh, a very good trainer of endoscopic surgery now. And uh, he, he'll uh, uh, throw more light on uh, the uh, role of septum in uh, recurrent miscarriage. Anji Yusuf, can you do you hear us and uh, can you contribute to this? Assalamualaikum, sir. And the sound? Uh, I think uh, in those cases, I have read two papers just me they have pointed out that even the first trimester miscarriages can be caused by septums. So is it better now? Can you hear me now? Hello, how the lecture but i was totally oblivious of the status. I think that uh, endoscopic surgery. promote unfortunately facility Diagnostic laparoscopy ki abhi tak facility agar hum nahi teaching departments mein create kar sake to ye hamara bada failure hai lekin aapko jahan pe bhi ye aapne apne liye karna hai sir ke aapke apne future ke liye hai apni speciality ke liye hai agar aap usme survive acche tarike se karna chahte hain meri kafi sari practice jo hai ye endoscopic surgeon le gaye hain mere se aur kam ho gayi hai meri practice so, I have to say that 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 I have to I'm going to